you on my ability to quickly switch my lead short. Right? That's one of the you know, benefits of the toy stack. And, and uh, twirling hammers is exactly the same. Right? And twirling hammers, if you throw the left punch, right? The idea is that, oh, I gotta be on the outside of this arm, I gotta make this arm work, right? So it's not, go ahead and do it again, it's not like this, right? Which you see a lot of people have difficulty with. If you just let your upper body guide, you have your left side go, like, I can, I can switch sides with this. And that's one of the first rules we're gonna do. That's why from here, like, just make sure that you're very comfortable, you're in a stable position. The twist stance has a stabilization quality. But people often underestimate. Remember, I hammered that into your brains and into your, you know, psyche over and over. Just like the forward bow gives you the stability in one direction, the twist dance, the foot goes the other way around. I want to have a break and a moment of stabilization, right? I can't just flip around and not have something to catch me, right? And we use the speed of our arm as he punches, right? It's like, the reason why I'm using a twist down is because he came on that side of my arm. Had you roundhouse that punch a little bit, I'd just be taking five swords, right? But it's a surprise, it's on the other side of my arm, so I go, whoa! That means I gotta go this way, right? That's pointed. that no Kempo technique is against a single strike. They're all against multiple strikes, right? But if you throw that punch again and I happen to be on the outside and I kick you in the groin while I'm doing that, right? Which is actually, again, the second half of attacking me, right? So as he comes in, I'm gonna kick him and I'm gonna also grab and I'm gonna punch him through the ribs because it's hard for him to uh, punch him with the other arm. And the main reason why it's hard is because I kicked him in the groin, right? While I'm blocking him. So he's a little you know, lower, right? He can turn and try to tackle me, but I can still throw this punch right here and I can still direct the punch him. Two, of course, right? But if I do it without the kick, then there's a higher probability he might punch high with that other arm and try to punch me right in the face, right? Um, and because of him still having good posture, right, I can totally rely on just this check right here stopping that punch because it's a little close and it's in a really good position with his elbow. So that means I now have to, from here, punch him in the face because it's going to intercept that, right? So if he goes one, two, I can go one, two, and he walks right into my strike. That's kind of cool, right? That's actually kind of what I want. But already, this requires perceptual skill, mental skill, and then physical skill, right? Thinking of doing a second punch. We need to have a, 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 a feedback. We need to know: Am I outdoing, outspeeding, or outmaneuvering the second punch? All right. So, the more I'm trying the second punch, the more he benefits from the result. Right? Yeah. I'm walking right into an elbow strike and he's in a good position. He's way over there in the zone of sanctuary is blocking. Don't forget that. position, I'm then not leading with my right. The whole point is not to get power in your block. I don't need power for my, you know, for this block. Throw the punch. I can just step over here and block. 
right? Why would I do all of this just to make my block work? All right? What I want to do is set up my next move. I want to have my other side fold. That's what I'm trying to accomplish, right? So I'm doing the M. That's why I want my other side fold because now I have a strike that is highly accurate, very powerful, virtually impossible for you to, to stop. You don't even see it coming, all right? And so Parker describes it like that too in his journals. I said, that's the reason why we're doing the strike. Now, and that brings us to the second reason why people can't do totally hammer. Um, they do the strike bomber. That's very normal. The problem with a, a technique like at this level, at second round, is that it appears very complicated. It appears to require so much different things that you have to do that it just seems impractical. Why, you know, that's a lot of things to remember. Um, so, and that is due to lack of understanding the natural core and ease of this technique. It should be effortless to do this technique. So do the punch again, do my meal, to do that strike, coming up this way, and then hooking this is actually not very hard. It's this motion, all right? Just like a retraction, it's a hooking action. This looping back knuckle is a hooking action, all right? But it also helps me then do it in one elbow, all right? When we do it on the back, it becomes very obvious how the, these two strikes belong together, right? So he punches, one, and two, three. It's very quick. It's relaxed, it's comfortable. Hit me, hit me, hit me. All right, he's gonna walk right through those strikes. Try it again. All right, make sense? That's what we gotta get to. So, and that's the reason why a lot of people have a hard time with this because you see a lot of people trying to do this on a horizontal plane. That's not a good idea. All right, it's gonna take too long, all right? Plus, now I have to be pinpoint things. Over here. Alright, I can find that target. Once I'm here, I am following this back right here from this position right here. Follow up this way, right there. It's very nice. The very natural thing to do. So he throws the left punch, right? We're here, we're here, right? Now they're doing this hammer fist, oh, to hit him in the kidney. That's not that hard for most people. So if I'm here, and I have my shaking hand right here, on. Yeah, I'm doing this elbow. From here, because of this elbow position, this is what we're going to do with the hammer fist right here because of this. All right, there's a great opportunity for bam, hit with a lot of, hit with a lot of, <laughs> hits with a lot of force, all right? And the exact same thing in twirling hammers. I'm in the exact same position. I'm here, I'm here, all right? And it's just I'm hitting the other kidney. All right, from this position, you simply use the rotation of your forearm. Now, once I get that, like punch again, if we made it this far, I'm here, and this hammer fist, I can then grab this arm. Right? And again, here people make it complicated. It's an arm bar. Had I had, stay there, had my arm, my body, my arms been here, I just do an arm bar, like returning stone. My arms aren't in that position. He is, I'm not. I am here, so that means I can grab him this way again without looking. I can look at my other opponent, but it's just an arm bar. So I can pull him back, bam, pull it right into this kick right here. At the same time, I'm taking all those weapons away. So he's here, I'm going one, grabbing, right, putting, holding his elbow. This is not just some strike, this is I, I'm controlling his arm. So I can put him where I want, I put the weight on the leg that I want him to have it on. I want to delay his action. I want to make it difficult for him to come. All right? So I'm here. I'm coming all across. I'm pulling him down a little bit. If I, you know, if I pull on a horizontal plane, he can go with it, turn, and try to knock me out with that left punch of it. All right? That's a problem. All right? So. 
spiraling staircase. And how is the plug that you see spinning all the time to a promotion? So I'm here grabbing, I get the control of this arm, bring him down a little bit, which allows me to then kick his leg out. Right? Exactly where you kick on the leg, it doesn't matter. Depends on where it's at. The point is, move this quite a little bit, I have his arm right here, and I can bam, I can pull myself into that kick and I can pull him into me. Right? So I, it's a very easy move. And again, I could be looking at the opponent or I'm finding this tiger. This is not hard to do. Most of you guys have done that. That puts my arms in this position. That's very important to understand. Because of the way I'm doing this arm control, my palms are facing outward. My elbows are up. And the reason why I move back a little the reason why that's relevant is because it gives me the opportunity for my next strike. Right here, I'm sandwiching both of these, right? I'm putting both of my arms boom, and they're sandwiching his head. I don't even have to be here anymore. I could just be standing here and doing that. Right here, boom, right? so this, can you see how this torques? Can you see how this torques? And if you simply allow that to reverse, you have to hammers. I do no more from here, one, two. Get the hands. I have this position, pulling here, one, two, three. That's why there's a claw in 20 hours. It is just the retraction of my arms. Plus, I gotta check this arm, right? Look at the right arm. All right, you're here, here. Look at the left arm, face. Right here, so it's a good idea to get the skill. To just do this like with your feet together without rising up. So you don't have to worry about this thrusting sweep kick so much. Right? So you can just practice this basic from here, from here in this position. Right? One, two. That's the motion. From here, pull this way, pull. Just reverse it. And you have, you know, you immediately have so many hammers. One, two, three. The last one is just, why are you doing the last one? Because my left hand has found the target that my right hand can now take over. Or take advantage. If my left hand is there, again, I can look at other opponents while I'm fighting. It's that simple. So, you know, so people think, oh, this is you know, difficult and there's all these different things I have to control. No. You pull on an arm, pull them into a kick, take the position of your arms to rotate, to torque your arms, drop your elbows, anchor your elbows, and then again, reverse that rotation. That's it. Yeah, that's another strike. But in terms of the, the difficulty, this is your difficulty. Torque, torque. You're here, just stand straight right now. You pull with your arms back. Talk, talk. Just do that. Talk one way, reverse. Talk one way, and reverse. All right. So the difficulty, the reason why a lot of people would first look at twirling hammers and say, "Man, that is complicated. That is difficult. It seems impractical." It's simply failure to realize, no, this is actually the nature of it. This motion gives me an opportunity to do this kind of a vertical punch, which is much more calm second round run up, and our extensions. To torque your punch, yeah, most people want to torque the punch the other way, because they used to hold on the punches. Many times a vertical punching tempo is gonna come from a checking position like this, and bam, now I'm gonna punch this way, I'm gonna torque the opposite direction, because that's, you know, this position of my arm gives me that potential. There's a potential torquing action, right? And the dropping of the elbow, make sense? So try to get that down, but again, if you do the whole technique, good luck. You get you know, too much to think about. So just think, all right, I was here. So let me just work this. One, two. When you're pulling this way, which makes sense out of these two strikes, makes sense why I would sandwich two. Why not? What else is my left hand going to do? Nothing. All right. One, and then reverse it. Two. One, two. One, two. Pull, strike, check. Pull, strike, check, and claw. 
One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You're not good with this? Don't try to do the ending of pulling out. If you are good with this, you're going to go, oh, my goodness. That is just not much effort. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then, yes, it's four. <laughs> but that's for a different reason. 